So I want to make this video to share with you guys exactly what has worked to increase my testosterone levels. And I'm not talking about on paper. I don't get tested because I feel like that's just that's just a number. Right? You could increase that number, you could still feel the same. And the thing about testosterone is you'll know once your testosterone levels are increasing because when you have higher levels of testosterone, you feel like you're on top of the world. You feel this confidence that's just it's mind-blowing all right you feel superhuman you feel like a beast all right anyone who has felt this they know they know what i'm talking about that's what high testosterone is it's not the numbers numbers don't mean shit. it's about how you feel all right so i'm gonna share with you guys exactly what has helped me to feel exactly that to increase my testosterone levels to feel exactly that all right now i'm gonna keep this video as short and as simple as possible, understand that um, there's a lot of things that I'm gonna discuss here. I'm gonna break it into two parts. Still gonna be in one video, just gonna be into two parts. I'm gonna leave the timestamps in the comments down below, just in case you don't wanna, you don't wanna watch one part, you just wanna skip to the next part. All right, but I do recommend watching it all because it, it all ties in. All right, it all connects together to form the end result, which is high testosterone. Uh, so with that being said, uh, the first part is lifestyle, okay? First thing that I found that really, really works is food cycling, meaning that you have a wide range of foods. You are not dieting. You are not limiting yourself to certain foods, nor are you eating the same foods every single day. But every single day, you are trying to shift what you're eating and just eat different things, all right? So... A big thing that really worked for me was instead of trying to get the uh, daily requirement of certain vitamins and minerals, and we'll talk about zinc in specific here because zinc is very important for testosterone production. Instead of trying to get the specific amount of zinc, like if I was taking a supplement like this, right? What I did instead was I would eat oysters once, twice, maybe three times a week. With that, that's more than enough zinc than I need for the entire week. All right, if I needed DHA, EPAs, right, I would eat, what, maybe one salmon, like a filet of salmon a week or two, and that would be more than enough than I need the entire week. Right? The only things that you really need on a day-to-day -day basis are your macronutrients, which, dude, you're pretty much already getting. Protein, carbs. Um, fats, you're getting that. Regardless of what you eat, you're pretty much getting those macronutrients. The micronutrients, it's more of like, it's it's a long end game. It's it's a week type of thing. It's not a daily type of thing. You gotta think back to the hunter gatherers. You gotta think back to the people, how we used to live before we live now. Like we didn't have these daily requirements. We weren't meeting. Uh, what is this? The daily the daily percentage of magnesium. On here it says uh, for 400 milligrams is 95 percent right so you're telling me that you'd be needing over 400 milligrams of magnesium every single day dude I'm telling you right now back then it wasn't like that all right they would get magnesium sporadically they would get zinc sporadically they would get vitamins sporadically that's how the body works the body utilizes the real nutrients, the real vitamins and minerals from the food it gets, not from man-made supplements, all right? So food cycling, do not limit yourself, have a wide range of foods. And if you are dieting, understand that you do need to take supplements because you are limiting the amount of foods that you have and you are limiting the amount of nutrients that you have available to you. And you're probably eating the same things pretty repetitively, all right? So, Something that I really found to be effective. If you do it, if you do food cycling, you don't need supplements, all right? Now, number two is sun exposure. I found that whenever I was in the sun for longer periods of time without sunblock and without getting burned, the amount of testosterone that I had, the way that I felt would just increase more and more and more and more. And, you know, we're always told that sun exposure is bad. We're always told that we shouldn't be in the sun, right, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I think that's bullshit, okay? 
you you can do your research but if you think about it think about the people that lived before us how we used to live before houses and all this stuff how much sun exposure do you think these people were getting on a day-to-day basis yeah a lot and yo the max amount of sun exposure most people get nowadays is what like 10 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes when people back were getting the entire day like hours i'm talking about eight hours plus sun exposure you know people in africa tribes out there they're getting sun exposure the entire day their skin has adapted to where they can handle the sun exposure like that so it doesn't matter what kind of skin you have if you just slowly work your way your skin will adapt and the more your skin adapts the more melanin it starts producing and you start being able to handle more sun at least in my experience once i'm in the sun and i just do very small periods and just increase that over time if i'm doing more than an hour if i'm doing more than two hours like the effects are out of this world all right the way that i feel mentally the way that i feel physically is out of this world all right when I was doing this beforehand, before I got my eye surgery and I had to pretty much limit sun exposure, I was in the sun and I got to the point where I was doing three hours a day. And when I was doing three hours a day, the amount, how do I, how do I even say this, man? Not the amount, but the fat that I had and the muscle that I had, it was a huge change. Like there was this huge recomposition that occurred at a rapid pace when I was getting a lot of sun versus before I was doing the same exact workouts, eating the same exact way, but not getting the sun exposure that I was doing, yet I wasn't having the recomposition occur. And then once I started getting all this sun exposure, yes, the sun, you know, makes you tanner, so it makes you look uh, more muscular, more defined, but the actual recomposition that was occurring during this time where I was getting the sun exposure was out of this world. All right. So that's that. That's number two. Number three is um, setting your sleeping. You know, it's very simple. If you're going to sleep one night at 10 o'clock, the other night at 12, the other night at like three in the morning, if it's all sporadic like that, you're not going to have the best quality sleep, meaning that you're going to have higher levels of cortisol, which just kind of fuck you up. I, again, I'm, I'm going to keep referring back to how we used to live back in the day. But back in the day, yo, we pretty much went to sleep around the same time frame all the time. All right, we pretty much woke up around the same time every time. All right, so we got deep quality sleep. We got the sleep that allowed us to um, heal our bodies. Right? When we sleep, that's when we heal, when we recover. And if your sleep is all over the place, your body's gonna suffer. And when it's suffering, your cortisol is gonna go up. If your cortisol goes up, testosterone suffers, your immune system suffers. And then instead of your body being able to produce more testosterone, it has to produce, um, it has to pretty much take care of your body because your body's running behind. So it's like in order for it to get back to a normal state, you'd have to set your sleeping schedule, right? And and like I said, that's something that I found extremely effective. All right. Hard at first because, you know, we want to do whatever we want to do. We want to read. We want to be using electronics or something like that. We want to be talking with people. We want to be hanging out. But set a sleeping time, whether that be 10, 11, 12, and just stick to it. You'll see a huge, huge, huge improvement. All right. Um, I'm going to try to go a little faster here because this video is probably going to be a long ass video uh, but the next one is correct posture you guys understand that if you have correct posture you automatically feel better i mean you're aligning your body the way it was meant to be aligned and if you do the experiment yourself if you do if you just spend 10 minutes just slouched over and then another 10 minutes, just fully erect, <laughs> fully with that correct posture, you'll notice a change. All right? You'll notice a change in how you feel, but most importantly, in your mental state. All right? When your mental state changes, 
so does your internal state, your hormonal state. Now, if your mind is all over the damn place, if you have a chaotic mind, your testosterone production will suffer. All right? Something that I noticed with myself because I used to overthink like crazy and it wasn't until I corrected all these things and I'm gonna keep getting into it, but it wasn't until I corrected it that I started noticing the shift in terms of how I felt and I knew all right, testosterone's increasing. I know that I have high levels of testosterone right now. Um, but the next one is uh, xenoestrogens. Now, xenoestrogens are things that can be found like deodorants, uh, shampoos, conditioners, soaps, things like that. And it's the things that we use every single day. So you want to be able to limit this, if not cut them out completely as much as you can. And, you know, something that I found real effective is um, the more simple something is, the better it is. All right, so like I have this deodorant right here. Let me try to open this shit. Uh, this is literally a, a crystal. Like if I put it right there, I don't know if you guys can see that shit. That's a crystal. Right, that's one ingredient, but it does exactly what it needs to do. And that is stop me from smelling like shit. All right. Now these things. If you can change it, if you can limit the xenoestrogens, your testosterone will increase. I'm telling you right now, you'll notice it within a week. If you're using a lot of shit that has a lot of chemicals, that has a lot of the xenoestrogens, if you cut it out for a week, you will notice a change. Uh, because I noticed it within at least five to six days. Okay. So the last two here for lifestyle is um, staying active, right? moving around. We weren't meant to be sedentary. Like right now I'm sitting down recording this video, but that's just because I don't have anything to put my, my tripod on to be able to record the video. We should always be moving. If you think about it back then, we didn't sit around that much. If we did, we probably weren't going to survive right? because we had to look around for things that we could eat, whether that be berries, or whether we find some nuts or something like that. We need to move around because if we stayed in the same area, we would exhaust the natural resources. We needed to move around to find animals, move around to find better shelter, right? These are things that's like, you got to keep in mind, yo, none of this shit was able to happen if, if they were sitting down. So it's like, if you're sitting down nowadays, that's going to affect your testosterone levels, you know? And it wasn't until I started moving all day long, right? even if it was just walking, or just standing up, that changed my testosterone levels to a huge extent, right? Scientifically speaking, if you're moving around more, it increases the amount of energy you need, increases the amount of calories that you have to intake, your total calorie uh, exponential. And if you have to intake more calories, your body is going to have a higher metabolism, which, dude, ultimately is gonna result in a higher hormonal output meaning a higher testosterone output. All right, try it for yourself, man. I'm, I'm not trying to hype any of this up. This is just personal experience, all right? And the last one is stress management. Um, so like I said, in the, uh, the sleeping and in the correct posture, if your body is producing too much cortisol, testosterone will suffer. So you have to learn to handle your levels of stress with whether it be meditation, whether it be going for walks, whether that be reading, praying, whatever it is that you do to handle stress, you have to do that because in today's day and age, we have a lot more stress than we did back then. Right? Back then, they probably didn't need to do much because they didn't live that much of a stressful life. The only stress that they had was just surviving in terms of food and not getting killed by the animals. All right, that's pretty much it. All right. So just meditation, walking, like I said, um, I found meditation to work the best for me. It allows me to just kind of decompress, really process everything that's going on in my head because I have ADHD. You know, my mind is constantly going. So when I do take those breaks out and I actually meditate, 
it really does allow me to just you know chill the fuck out all right so with that being said that's the lifestyle changes now the second part is pretty much an adaptation or adaptation stages because the way that testosterone works is that you need to have a need for it if there is no need for high levels of testosterone you will not have high levels of testosterone if you are sedentary you're staying at home inside all day working on a computer all day long your body has no use for high testosterone i'm gonna tell you that because i've experienced it where i would just go to the gym work out come home and just be sedentary i'm talking about sitting on my ass and just on my phone or on the computer the entire rest of the day and when i did that dude my testosterone was trash like i thought i was good because i was working out but it wasn't until i started implementing all these other things and these next things that i'm about to say that i really started to notice the effects of high testosterone versus low testosterone all right so understand the testosterone you need to create a need for it all right it's the adaptation hormone and it it needs it needs something needs some kind of a stressor some kind of thing that allows it to adapt that there, there needs to be a reason for high testosterone it's not just going to happen okay so the first one for this is competition i find that any form of competition increases testosterone whether that be playing a video game whether that be an actual sport whether that be some life or death situation like any type of competition is going to increase testosterone I mean, there was one time where I went over our friend's house. They were having a get together, and they were all playing Mario Kart. All right, they were all playing Mario Kart, and this chick was basically saying that I was trash and that I couldn't play Mario Kart. And I was like, "All right, I'm gonna beat you, and you gonna buy me food." All right, because a hey, food for me, food. I'm probably fucking up the mic here, but food for me is one of the biggest things in this world. But anyways. Um, I ended up beating this chick in this game. Um, she ended up buying me food, and I got her number. But that's, you know, besides the point and all this stuff. I'm just saying that even that right there, just a video game, me playing that video game, was the competition that raised testosterone. And winning a competition is a whole nother level, right? That'll increase testosterone to a whole nother extent than just competing in and of itself. And I know y'all can... Y'all can probably vibe with what I'm saying here. Uh, The next one is martial arts. Putting yourself in a situation where you you essentially have to defend yourself. It's it's almost like you're putting yourself in a life or death situation, but you're not really. It's it's a martial art. And when you do that, the training in and of itself will increase the testosterone, at least from my experience. You're going in there, you're creating a, uh, an environment where you have to defend yourself, but it's still safe. All right? But the mind doesn't perceive it as that. The, the mind and the body will still perceive it as like, oh, I have to adapt. I need to survive here. And it will increase your testosterone production. Now, something that I got to say here, my damn mouth is getting dry now, is that if you are going into martial arts, I leave your ego at the door. You know, you're going to get your ass handed to you a lot. That's all right. You got to learn. And then you got to understand that when you're training, you're training. You're not doing so to try to end the other dude's career. You know, you don't go hard unless the other person agrees to go hard with you. You know, the times that you are going all out 100% trying to end the other dude's career, that's when you are competing. All right. Like I said, competition is where the real test happens but if you start doing martial arts that will increase the testosterone bro i know this i know this other people who do martial arts can definitely vouch all right so the next thing here is strength training and i'm talking about lower repetitions anywhere from three to five reps the reason for this is because it is really taxing your central nervous system and there's big adaptations that have to happen not only in 
the uh, central nervous system, but also in your, your motor units, if I'm saying that correctly, the motor units. Um, there are big adaptations that have to occur, which increase testosterone. All right. Now, this doesn't need to just be with free weights. It can also be with body weight. Like if you're doing a chin up and you can't really do a chin up, like as long as you can do a few and get to the point where like you're upping your chin ups, you're in the strength training range. All right. Like people training for a planche or people training for um, a front lever or a back lever or um, the human flag. Like this is all strength training because you have to you have to train your, your central nervous system, your motor units to be able to adapt. It all increases testosterone way more than hypertrophy work and way more than endurance work. And again, just like I said with the martial arts, you got to leave your ego at the door. You, you can't go too, too quick with uh, your strength training because you will hurt yourself. And I found that your body needs to recover in terms of like a deload week after about eight to 12 weeks, you need to give your central nervous system some time to just come back. Whether you're taking a week off, whether you're doing a week at like 25%, it's the only thing that'll allow you to keep going. Now, at least that's what I found in my experience. Your body is not just gonna be able to go like a machine forever and forever. Like you have to, you gotta chill out sometimes. Right, but I found that strength training is something that really, really, really increases testosterone. All right, whether that be free weights, whether that be body weight, it works. All right, and again, people who are doing it can vouch. All right, so the next one is high intensity interval training. Most specifically, I'd say sprinting, um, swimming as fast as possible, or doing a hard sparring session or just a sparring session where you're going all out in terms of speed, in terms of uh, energy output. Um, but things like that, it's also, it's again, it's, it's taxing the central nervous system, taxing your motor units. But at the end of the day, these things are creating a need for higher testosterone, right? Like if you think back then, like if there was a hunter, he would be sprinting sporadically, right? He would be, performing things that really required a lot of his strength. I'm talking about like anywhere from 75% to 100% of his strength in whatever it is that he was doing. All right, so you have to, you have to replicate it. And I mean, that's what I found to work is what that when you do replicate it, it has the same effects, right? Like people back then, what worked for them will work now. And it's so simple. It's just a matter of creating a need for testosterone. If you are lifting heavy weights, if you are doing very, very difficult body weight movements, if you are putting yourself in a martial arts situation where you have to defend yourself, you have to be creative, you have to find new ways, get the pattern recognition, right? If you are putting yourself in these things, you're doing sprints, you're swimming as fast as possible, you are creating a need for higher testosterone. You are creating this adaptation to occur. And I'm telling you right now, from personal experience, you will feel the effects. All right? People who do this feel the effects. Like I said, if you're doing it, you can vouch. All right. Now the next one is cold showers. You know, I found cold showers to be extremely effective, more so because it's a stressor. It's a stressor on the body and the body needs to adapt. So it does, it does release a bit of cortisol, but it allows your body to better handle cortisol. So in the long run, it actually lets your testosterone be way higher than it could be if you're not taking cold showers. All right, and that's, that's facts, bro. All right, anyone taking cold showers long-term, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, the next one is the Wim Hof breathing exercise. Now this, this is um kind of a gray area but it's just like cold showers in the sense that you're creating a a spike a little spike in cortisol you know you're creating something a stressor that your body needs to adapt to so over time of doing the wim hof method just like cold showers 
you experience an increase in testosterone because you can better handle cortisol. And dude, the more you can handle cortisol, the higher testosterone is going to be because you can't have high testosterone with high cortisol. All right? When your cortisol is high, the testosterone drops because the body has to focus on bringing down that cortisol and being able to heal and recover the body with what's going on with the high cortisol. Cortisol is very high stress. All right, just keep that in mind. Um, the last two here is very important. All right, so for women, oh yeah, women is one of the last ones. And there's a fine line when I say women. All right, when you're trying to get with a woman, and then you end up getting with her, that's testosterone. That's a very high spike in testosterone. Now it's not an adaptation, but it's more so, it's more so your body creating more testosterone to reproduce. All right, now understand high testosterone, the biggest need for high testosterone is for reproduction, for you to survive. And understand that every dude has this in them Every dude has the potential to literally uh, create super high levels of testosterone because it's all about being able to reproduce and survive. And when women are involved, yo, that, that starts bumping up your testosterone like crazy because you want to reproduce. You know, it is ingrained in you to want to reproduce. So you will literally start doing more things to get this girl you will you will take more risks you'll have you'll you'll have higher effort in the things that you do it's just it increases testosterone it changes the way that you think changes the way that you feel you know i don't gotta explain too much on that but what i will say about the fine line is that if you're in a relationship the need for testosterone begins to drop if you have a family and you're in a relationship the need for a family drops even further now they have studies on this where they even uh, have dudes in relationships where you know they're, they're getting it on a lot more frequently but even then the amount of testosterone they have is still going to be lower than the single dude who's trying to get the chick all right something to keep in mind um, it's very effective I'm not saying to use women but hey, if you're enjoying your time with them and it's also increasing your testosterone, why the hell not, right? Um, but the last one is being with men, all right? Because you need to have that competition. And some dudes will be like, oh, well, I don't want to have the competition. You know, for a long time, I didn't want to didn't compete with my friends or anything like that. But the thing is, Competition happens at a subconscious level, right? Any dudes that you hang out with, there's some kind of competition that's occurring, whether that be on a conscious or subconscious level. And you got to look at little kids, little boys. Right? Even though they don't have these high levels of testosterone like they would once they get older, they are boys. They are literally a male, right? When, when a human is in the womb, developing whichever hormone is higher whether that be testosterone or estrogen will signal the creation of either the testes or the ovaries right so if if you have a male whether he's five six years old or whether he's 18 25 it doesn't matter he has higher testosterone than the female right so you have these little boys right five six years old if you pay attention to them when they hang out with other little boys Dude, they're always competing, whether that be in a video game, whether that be trying to see who could run the fastest, whether that be who could climb this tree the fastest, whether that be wrestling or something like that, whether that be playing with toys and trying to beat the other dude in whatever role playing thing is going on with the toys or something like that. All right. Competition, it always comes in. Like I said in the beginning, competition is one of the biggest things for men. You know for the testosterone and when you hang around other guys especially other dudes who challenge you and who bring you to a higher standard 
you will have high levels of testosterone. All right. Perfect example of this would be dudes that are in jail. You know, not only are they around other dudes, but they're also threatened for their life. You know, because they're doing things that could, well, they're not doing things, but they're in a situation that could really, you know, it, it could really be the end. All right, so that increases testosterone, and I found that for myself, whenever I was hanging around dudes that were also doing the martial arts, that were also weight training, my testosterone would also be increased. I would feel this competition, this need for competing, but then anytime I hung around dudes that were just kind of lazy, were kind of complacent, um, they didn't really challenge themselves, or anything like that, they were in relationships, relationships. Man, whenever, whenever I was around these dudes, I would feel my testosterone drop. I would feel just like a weaker version of myself. All right, and like I said in the very beginning, testosterone is not about this number that you get tested and it's like, oh, well you have 832 uh, so-and-so. Testosterone is about how you feel, man. Like, yes, there is, the scientific side of it but like you know when you have high levels of testosterone all right there's no if ands or buts there's no way around it you know when you have high levels of testosterone all right that's the video I'm not gonna keep going i feel like it's long enough i did my best to shorten it so i hope it helps you guys in one way shape or form um these were the things that really helped me the most like I said, lifestyle, adaptation. Um, try them out in your life. Right, try them out and see for yourself because everything that I talk about on this channel is literally shit that I put to the test. I don't speak theoretical at least nine times out of 10. I try to say my truth and exactly what it is that I've experienced so you guys could try.